Hey guys, I've got a quick hip harness tutorial for you today. A lot of people see me using this hip harness and they ask, oh, what is that? What's the name of that? I've never seen it before. I don't know if it actually has a name. I don't think any particular person invented it and put their personal stamp on this hip harness. Uh, I originally learned it from someone who said they got it from David Lawrence. I think a lot of bondage gets passed down this way with uh, just some vague recollection of, oh, I learned it from a video once. Uh, I don't think it's part of anyone's particular style, but if I'm wrong about that, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. I usually just refer to it as a figure eight hip harness or a reverse tension figure eight hip harness because that describes the form of how it's built. It describes the architecture that holds everything together. When you see me tying it, you're going to see that it's held together by reverse tensions, meaning that the rope at the cross point is held together by two pieces that are pulling apart, reversing tension on each other. So we're going to begin again with the bite of our rope, as always. Go around the outside of the hips and pull through to create a lark's head. Now we want this hip line to be somewhat asymmetrical. This is going to go not above the iliac crest, but right below it. A little bit of room to work. The bottom edge goes down about where the pocket would be on a set of jeans. And then back behind the thigh, like so. Slip under the line and use this new bite that we've created to pull up and through. And reverse tension. We're going to follow above the initial line. Make sure your lines are straight around behind. Then once again, pull through and reverse tension and follow below the bottom set of lines back around. Now this figure eight pattern is something that we could keep repeating over and over again. You see, I could do a third hip line here, but that leaves me with very little to finish off. So instead, we're going to forgo that. I'm going to pull the rope down through this way, reverse tension once more, and then we're going to begin a lashing. We're going to go over, under, and over and under in a circle to kind of push things together. Each step on this crams the rope together like a fist holding those reverse tensions in place. Eventually, we might reverse direction to push things together in the opposite way. So we'll circle back around the other way, doing our regular over-under. Creates this nice rosette look, which I like a lot, and it uses the rope up quite effectively. Eventually, you're going to get to a point here where we can just pull a little bit through and under and create a half hitch. This is a final lock off on this hip harness. This is not really what's keeping the whole tie together. It's just a little ending point to keep things from fraying. And these other little bits, we'll just kind of tuck those in behind and forget about them. With this piece right here, it creates a cool kind of a grab point to throw people around by. Uh, just keep your bands straight. You see how this is asymmetrical, and you could very easily uh, transfer it over from one side to the other, create a second hip harness, such that you'd have a full kind of a rock climbing harness setup. See how it looks from each angle. And then we'll stop and talk about it a bit. I love this harness because it's both functional and it looks kind of nice. It has a western woven kind of look, but it also creates flat bands that are very, very comfortable. You saw, of course, the demo only covers tying on one side of the body. Now, I would just duplicate that process and mirror it over to the opposite side of the body, such that you have two completely separate harnesses that can overlap into one. The benefits of this is that you're using twice as much rope and covering a lot more surface area so that if you use this in suspension, you're going to have a lot more support on the body. It almost creates a rock climbing harness out of rope. Again, this is not the most indestructible of hip harnesses. It's certainly not bomb proof if you're doing a lot of heavy pulls on it, but it's safe and it's a lot of fun. It's one I use all the time and I hope you guys enjoy it too. 
Let me know what you think in the comments, and as always, have a great one.